So I'm going to experiment with a brand new series where I reflect on what I've learned from making content for Waking Dreams Media and other clients over the last month. So it's gonna be a little bit more relaxed, but hopefully the insights are more unique because they're coming from experience rather than just best practices. So number one, I'm changing my background if you haven't noticed. So this one is simple. A few people actually mentioned this to me and my background is similar in many of my videos. And I think this actually results in fewer people clicking and engaging on the post because they believe it might be something that they've already seen. At least in a split second, it's actually indistinguishable from something that they've previously watched. So they just move on. And then I think this has a compounding effect on the LinkedIn algorithm where your posts just don't show up as much. So um, I think finding ways to change is the majority of the frame through lighting, color, background, green screen, even your title cards, uh, I think will actually make videos perform better. It's really the big obvious stuff and um, the stuff that people notice straight away. I've talked about this as packaging in previous videos. And while everything should be recognizably yours, it should be also distinguishable from everything else that you've made. It's a tricky balance to strike, but that's what makes a great content designer. I am now mixing content forms. So if sitting down to create a carousel for LinkedIn isn't your idea of a Friday night, photo dumps could be a great alternative. These are popular on Instagram, but I actually don't see that many of them on LinkedIn. So I asked the question on LinkedIn last year and after getting a good response, I decided to do photo dumps every time that I remember to actually take behind the scene photos from my shoots. And it actually turns out that these are some of the best performing content of the month. These posts got pushed big time by LinkedIn. If you're thinking, well, I don't have cool trips. I don't have stuff that I can show off. It's as simple as 10 photos to represent your workday, which I'll actually try myself next month. These posts are being pushed because their engagement is actually stupidly high. As people flick through each photo, it's considered a click and engagement by LinkedIn. And it's easy for an audience to be nosy and just flick through pictures. It's a little bit of effort for a lot of novelty. They click through them and that's what gets pushed out there. These are recognizable clicks, which makes it easy for LinkedIn to measure compared to video or text, where you could be gone to make a cup of tea while they also are in front of you and LinkedIn wouldn't know any better. So from next month, I'll try to publish a broader mix of content, including text, video, and images. I'm gonna start making a note of busy periods. So if you can't deal with busy periods, you will never be consistent with content creation. So take May for instance, an exceptionally hectic month for us. We shot 10 videos and a short film and we fell behind with posting. While we kept our audience engaged with behind the scene photos and releases, we missed out on daily posts and the outcome was a dip in engagements and impressions for the month. Now I knew these shoots were coming, I did nothing about it. I got caught on the review part because I was on set for five days straight. And then the set of videos for the month that mind you were shot and edited couldn't be posted. As a business owner, I am the roadblock. I will recognize that in future and plan all of my tasks in a system when I know I'm free. If you need to schedule more videos in advance, do it. That's the beauty of a 30 day content bank. It's a lifesaver. It's like an emergency fund of content for the rainy day when you can't go out and shoot. I'm gonna back up what I say with personal experience. The facts, they're out there for everyone. What makes you unique is your story. It's the best way to stand out. Don't be Wikipedia. Be your grandfather telling you a story about his past on his knee. Even as you educate, make it digestible. People remember stories, so embedding your teachings within a story works wonders. Most of the maths lessons that we've learned have probably slipped our mind at this point. But I bet we can all recall the story of a kid that leaned in his chair and split his head open. When teachers genuinely want you to remember something, they don't throw equations at you. They tell you a story about a child that died. Nothing beats a personal story when it comes to setting yourself apart from the competition. Our leverage in this world of content creation lies in what we can offer that's uniquely ours. Most of the videos I initially released were void of stories. 
just an information dump. And if you're unfamiliar with who I am, then why would you digest that information? It's easy to do because you don't have to research or talk about why you know something, but it's not effective. Stories serve as compelling evidence and we, as humans, are always looking for the reasons to listen to someone. Essentially, it's like saying, hey, I ran this experiment. Here's what I learned. There are lessons to take from science here. Cite your sources, talk about your experiment, don't just talk about your conclusion. I am implementing a system for early engagement. I recently completed a content creation course offered by Justin Welch, a notable LinkedIn influencer. Among many of the insights he shared, one stood out to me, the significance of early engagement for enhancing post visibility. This wasn't a concept that I had a firm handle on previously, but I did observe a trend. My posts that garnered likes quickly after becoming shared tended to go further. Conversely, if something only gathered a couple of likes, it seldom got traction later. Essentially, the first few hours of engagement can make or break a post success. So developing a system to optimize early engagement sounded like an excellent idea. Welch offered several strategies, such as establishing a support network of fellow regular posters who can mutually like and share content. This approach aligns well with LinkedIn's existing ecosystem, a mix of mutual support and clamor that I call a cacophony, a psychophantic cacophony. Another strategy involves posting content in groups with similar interests. The first step is to join these groups and share your content. Engaging with early comments also boosts a post visibility. The more comments, the better your post performs. But how do you actually get people to comment? Well suggest adding a element to the post that sparks engagement. He emphasizes the need for a strong stance or opinion on your topic, as it naturally invites conversation. So that is the top stuff that I learned this month. I'll let you know how these changes impact results next month, and I'll talk to you then. Thank you. So did you agree or disagree? Please do let me know down in the comments below. Also in the first comment, you will see a link to our newsletter. If you want to subscribe for weekly content tips, summarized and sent directly to your inbox, go straight there. Believe me, you won't have to scroll through these 10 minute videos for the best tips. Thank you.